SQL Server is great for storing data, but how can you use it in Excel? Find out in this video how you can load tables and queries into Excel, Power Query, and Power Pivot. Hello, I'm Philip Burton from filecats.co.uk. In this article, we are going to look at how we can use SQL within Excel. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is used in many databases such as Microsoft SQL Server. In such a database, you store data in tables and you can run SQL queries, which are based around select statements to retrieve data. The advantages of using a database such as Microsoft SQL Server to store your data include, the data is strongly typed, meaning that you will not be able to store a number in a date field, for instance. This makes your data instantly validated. It can be a central data repository for your data on multiple projects. Multiple people can access the same data at the same time, this reduces duplication and inconsistencies, and it's also secure. Security is built into relational database management systems. Microsoft SQL Server offers several layers of security. So for these reasons, you can see that that's why we should be storing data in SQL Server in the first place. How do you access an SQL Server? Well, first of all, you need a data connection. If you're using a work SQL Server, then you will be given details of your server by your IT department. This will include the server name, this can be taken from the connection string if you have it, and the authentication method. You'll be using either Windows Authentication, which uses your Windows username and password, or SQL Server Authentication, which uses a separate username and password. Now you can install SQL Server on your own computer for free, but I would recommend only doing this if you're going to play about with it. If you want other people to use it, then I would suggest installing it on the central server. You may have to get a paid for edition, or you could perhaps use the express edition if not many people are going to be using it. If you do have Microsoft SQL Server on your computer, then the server name could be localhost, one word, or maybe just a dot, and you'll probably be using Windows Authentication. So let's connect to SQL Server. You can use this to retrieve the Microsoft SQL Server data. As you can see here, I have got a database called AdventureWorks 2014, and within that, I have got lots of tables, views, and stored procedures. So you can use this to retrieve SQL Server data. But how can you use Excel to do this? Well, there are three different places in where you can load SQL data. First of all, in the main Excel window, in the Get and Transform window, also known as the Power Query Editor, and in the Power Pivot window, also known as the Data Model. We'll look at each of these places in turn in this video. So first of all, connecting SQL to the main Excel window. So this is the main Excel window, and it used to be used method like Microsoft Query. However, this has changed. To load data from SQL Server, now you go to Data, Get Data. Now, if you've got Excel 2016, you may see Get Data over here. From Database, from SQL Server Database. As I say, this has superseded previously used methods. Now, there are four different SQL Server data sources that you might want to query. Firstly, you might want data from a table, so the raw data. Secondly, you might want query results from a previously created view. This is the result of an SQL Server data analysis that's been encapsulated, stored as a view. Thirdly, you might want the results from a stored procedure. This could be a more complicated analysis or one that involves parameters. For example, you may just want all sales from the state of Florida and you could use Florida as a parameter. Fourthly, you may wish to run an ad hoc SQL query using the select statement. First of all, we need the server name. So I'm going to go back into SSMS, going back to connect, and there's a server name. So I'm just going to copy this into the server. Very useful if you've got a really long server name. Now, if you want to run a stored procedure or an ad hoc query, then at this stage, it says database optional, but you would need to add the database name. So let's get the database name as well. So the database name, AdventureWorks 2014. Then you would need to click on the advanced options and 
put in your stored procedure or an ad hoc query. So if I was doing an ad hoc query, I could do select star from and name of your table, for instance. So copy that in. And then you would press OK. But in this version, let's assume I'm not going for that. I'm going for table or query. Now, when I click OK, the next thing it will ask is are you using Windows authentication or are you using SQL Server authentication? So, whichever authentication you're using, you need to select the details. Computer won't ask me that because I've previously authenticated. Then, if I'm getting the results of a table or query, we can then select it. So, I'm going to select human resources.vemployee. Now, we've got two buttons at the bottom load and transform data. I'm going to have a look later and see what happens when I click on transform data. For now, I'm going to click on load. So, now I've made the link, we have our table. It's an Excel table and I can use it just like other data stored in a table. If the data changes in SQL Server, it's very easy to refresh. All I do is go to Table Design and Refresh, or I can right and click and go to Refresh. It will then reload the data. So this is one way of doing it. So I'm just going to close the sheet and open up a new one. So what happens if when I got this data, I didn't click on Load, but I clicked on Transform. Well, this would get me to the Get and Transform window. And here you can see the results. You can then perform additional manipulations in Get and Transform, also known as Power Query Editor, before the data is transferred into Excel. For example, maybe I want to just show two of the columns. No problem. I can remove all the other columns. Maybe I want to add additional columns. So let's add a new column. So I'll go to add column. And probably the easiest way to add a column is to go to column from examples from all columns. And so I type what I want the results to be. And the computer works out the formula from that. So let's rename it as a full name. Now, maybe I don't want all of the rows either. Maybe I want to summarize the data. So see how many people the same last name I've got. Well, I can do this by going to the group by. So I'm grouping the last name and I'm counting the number of rows. So let's sort it. You can see we've got some people with two or three instances. But I don't want to do that. So I'm going to get rid of these last steps. You can see that this is a macro language. The computer is taking the data, it's removing other columns, it's inserting a merge column and renaming it. The advantage of doing it this way is that if you refresh the data, the computer goes through all of these steps again. You don't have to do them again and again and again. Additionally, Power Query will try to reduce the amount of data that it needs to receive from SQL Server using a process called Query Folding. You can see that it's not retrieving all of the data now. It's just retrieving two of the columns. And similarly, if I said I don't want all of the rows, I just want to keep the top 50 rows, then Power Query will just retrieve the top 50. So only the needed rows and columns are retrieved from SQL Server in the first place. And you might be thinking, no, that's not true because it's all the way out here, it's not there. No, SQL Server will work out that this top 50 should be implemented in here. So this reduces network traffic and increases the speed of retrieving that data. Now, we can now leave the Power Query by going to Home, Close and Load and the data would then be loaded into an Excel table as before in this reduced form. However, if we go to close and load two instead, then we've got options. We can instantly create a pivot table or pivot chart without necessarily loading the data into Excel as a table. Or 
we could just save it as a connection without loading the data at all. So what's the point of that? Well, if I wanted later to create a pivot table, for example, I could say I want to choose my query. So by doing this, it means that I don't need to load the data into Excel. It's one less spreadsheet that I need. Now I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to edit this. That gets me back into the Power Query window. And if I go back to my connections, I can also re-choose where I want it to load to. And there is a checkbox for add this data to the data model. If I click on that, the data will be exported to Power Pivot, also known as the data model. So this is the third way of connecting SQL to Excel using the data model, also known as Power Pivot. To do this, we go to Data and Manage Data Model. And you can see that our data has already been inserted. But what if we wanted to insert data directly into there? Well, we can go to Home, From Database, From SQL Server. And then it's a fairly similar model, albeit that the dialog box looks a bit different. So I can write a query or I can select a list of tables and views. I can select what I want. So let's go for the non-view version of employee. And I can also select related tables. So you can see it's selecting a few more for me. Click finish. And the data is being imported. There we go, click close. You can see all of these additional tables in there. However, in addition, these tables are linked together. How? Because we've got primary keys and foreign keys in SQL Server, and I've asked them to bring in the related tables. Now, once the data has been imported, then I can do more. So for instance, maybe I want to go into the person table and join together first name and last name again. I can do that. So this will be full name, and it's equal to first name, and a space, and last name. So this would be an example of a calculated column. Additionally, I can hide things. So maybe I don't want to see the person type. Just right and click on it and go to hide from client tools. And then when I go and create a pivot table by going to home, pivot table, pivot table, I can use all of these different tables. So I want to say, okay, this employee, for all of the employees, this is actually a not something that I should sum up. I'm going to get from another table, say salesperson, the total sales year to date. And now it is only showing those items which are in both tables. So you can see the potential, huge flexibility when using Power Pivot. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, why not click on the like and then subscribe and tick that bell next to it. That will mean that you will be notified of any new videos. Are you interested in Power Query or Power Pivot? Then why not join me for my analyzing and visualizing data with Microsoft Excel course, where we will have a look at pivot tables, get and transform data, also known as Power Query, and creating a data model or Power Pivot. Do you want to learn SQL statements query? Then why not have a look at my SQL Server Essentials in an hour of course. Here we'll be looking at the six principal clauses of the SQL select statement, select from where, group by having an order by. And I've also got an eight hour course and a 29 hour course if you want to go into more detail. Thank you very much for watching this video and keep learning.